Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the latest Institute of Physics Meter Physicist. Um, thank you all very much for coming. Uh, this is the first one we've done, which is uh, specifically aimed at guides and rangers. So if there's any brownies or rainbows in the room, um, you're very welcome to stay. Uh, but we're going to be uh, talking about stuff kind of more at the uh, guides and rangers age group. Um, I'm David. Uh, I'm just here to ask the questions. So I am a physicist, uh, but I'm not here to answer the questions today. You're here to meet two other physicists. One of those is Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. Hi. One of those is Amy. Hello, Amy. Hello. Uh, I would introduce them, but uh, the first part of the uh, program is them introducing themselves and everything about themselves. So uh, I'm not going to uh, kind of steal their thunder and do that now. So. The format for this evening is that um, each of them are going to introduce themselves for five or 10 minutes and tell you about themselves. And then you will be able to ask them questions. And for the next 45 minutes or so, that's what will be happening. So here you can see, hopefully you can see this thing up in the corner. If you open that up, then you can type your questions there. And then I will ask the questions um, to Charlotte and Amy, or both of them, um, as we go through. Um, they can't see the question, so I'll be going through them more or less in order, hopefully. If several of you ask the same question at the same time, then I'll stick them together. Um, uh, somebody said they can't hear me. I will sort that out in a second. Uh, we've heard already that uh, a hello from Second Sunbury Guides. Uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from us. Um, if anybody else wants to name check at the start, that's absolutely fantastic as well. Um, Right, we have nearly all of the people in the room. I'm just going to talk, probably fill in for another minute or so, because there are still people joining us. So hopefully you're all working towards, you might be working towards this badge. This is the I am a physicist badge. We launched it as a pilot about two years ago. Uh, we hope to have a thousand people do it in the first year. Instead, we had 2,800 do it in six months. And then we had 11,000 do it in the first year. And we've now had 23,000 people complete the badge. And we've not advertised it yet. So hopefully, however you found out about it, everybody else is finding out about it as well. And we've had girls as far apart as Australia, the United Arab Emirates, um, the Netherlands, and the United States of America all get in on the action doing the badge as well. So this evening is about, you, you've got various things that you do in the badge. But one of the things you have to do is meet a physicist and talk to them and find out about their job, their career and so on, because it is absolutely fantastic um, to be able to do physics. So in a moment, I will tell the people who can't hear me what to do through the chat function. But as it is, I am going to stop sharing my screen and Charlotte is going to be the first one to introduce herself to us. So over to you, Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you, David. So yeah, I'm just going to introduce myself and tell you a little bit about my job and how I got here and what I've done before now. So I'm a researcher at the University of Nottingham. I'm an imaging scientist, and that means that I use medical imaging techniques to look inside the body and use physicists to so use physics to develop those techniques to make them work for different diseases or different physiological processes that we want to look at how they work. So I work with MRI scanners, which I'm guessing you probably know what an MRI scan is. You've probably seen it on Grey's Anatomy or House or whatever medical TV program you've seen. Um, so these are just big machines. They're very noisy machines. And we use them to take pictures inside the human body. It's used for lots of different purposes. Personally, I'm interested in kidney disease. So I use MRI scanners to look at the kidneys and look at how the kidneys work. And I use physics to develop new ways of looking at the kidneys, new ways of seeing different parts of the kidneys or seeing how the blood flows into the kidney, looking at how blood moves around the kidney, um, looking at things like how stiff the kidney is. So if it's, um, if it's got any scars in it, that'll make the kidney stiffer and that's not a good thing. So you can look at things like that with an MRI scanner. Um, and then I also look at new ways of developing techniques to look at that data. So after we've collected an image, I develop ways to look at the data afterwards to say, what is this showing us? And what can that tell us about that person's health? So say this MRI scan says that this person's kidney is stiffer than it should be. And what does that mean in terms of their kidney disease and their health and what can be done about it? Um, so that's what I do. I 
I've been doing that for about five years now. Before that, I did my PhD at the University of Nottingham. So I'll just take a step back and tell you how I got to this point. So um, when I was around your age, so in high school, I enjoyed maths. Maths was probably the subject that I was best at, um, without being beheaded. But that's what I enjoyed. Um, I also really enjoyed English. I really liked and still like to read a lot. Um, so that was probably my two main subjects that I enjoyed the most. And I was a bit stuck between what to do with the two of them. Um, for my options at GCSE, I took health and social care, which I don't think is an option at many schools and maybe not an option anymore. But at my school, that was an option. And I also took French. Um, so I went to a school in Salford, which is a city just outside of Manchester. And I went to a very normal school and my school didn't have A-levels. So I went to a school and then a sixth form college, which is slightly different to, I think, how things are done in Nottingham or most places anyway. Um, so yeah, at school I enjoyed maths and English. Wasn't at all interested in science and especially not physics, mainly because the physics teacher at my school left when I started year 10. So for my GCSEs, there was no real physics teacher. Um, the other science teachers were great, but there was no one really to teach us physics. So I didn't really understand why physics was interesting or what you could do with it until college, which is where I did my A-levels. Um, so I did my GCSEs and then when I went to college, I had no idea what I wanted to do. So I picked maths and English because I liked them and I was all right at them. I got good GCSEs in them. And on my first day of college, I sat down with what I now know was the physics teacher, but at that point just thought it was a teacher um, and said, I don't know what to do. And he put his head in his hands and said, look at your exam results. You like maths. You must be a physicist. He's like, you're perfect for a physicist. And I was like, I hate physics, not interested at all. Um, and he was like, who did this to you? Who made you scared of physics? Um, so I agreed, I'd give it a go. And I'd try it for two weeks. And if I hated it, I'd swap to chemistry. Um, and I like to think the fact that I got put with that teacher that morning was the reason I've now got the job that I have because I would never have chosen physics. That was never my path, I don't think. Um, so yeah, I did physics at A-level. I had that particular physics teacher with my physics teacher. And he was great. He was the kind of teacher that to teach gravity, he'd stand up on a desk and jump off and say that's gravity. Like everything was very active. It was a really good way of learning. Um, but I was always a bit stuck because I quite liked the idea of a sociable job and a job where I could work with people. And everything I'd seen in physics was very lab based or computer based and there was no real sociable side to the job. Um, so throughout college, I took extra courses in teaching. So I thought maybe I'd like to be a teacher. I um, did a placement at a doctor's surgery because I thought maybe I'd want to go into that. Um, was a bit stuck and then I had to decide what to do at university and found the perfect degree where I didn't have to choose because you could do joint honours, maths, physics and French. And I thought if I do all three, then it doesn't matter. I can pick at the end what to do next. So I ended up changing that slightly and just did maths and physics and dropped the French because I didn't like the idea of a year abroad, which now I think was a bad choice, but at the time I was a bit scared. Um, so I did maths and physics at university, really enjoyed it, had a really good university experience. I went to the University of Manchester um, and I went there because I did a placement there in my summer at university, at college, sorry, we got to do a two week at any university and I chose Manchester and I loved it. So I went there. Um, but I was still a bit stuck with this thought that I wanted a job where I could have a caring profession. I wanted to work with people and I wanted to be sociable and talk to people and have that kind of job. I couldn't see that as a physicist until I said this to a friend who said, well, my cousin's a medical physicist. Have you thought about that? I'd never heard of it before. Um, so I did a bit of research and found out that medical physicists were very applied physics, physics where you work with people, where you make decisions that affect people's health care or if you go on the research side of things can develop techniques that can help with medicine. Um, so I did a placement in the summer in a nuclear medicine department, which was really cool. Um, and that got me really excited about it. And then in my fourth year, we have to pick what project you want to work on. So I picked an MRI project, honestly, because it was the only medical physics project available. It wasn't, I wanted to do MRI. It was just what was there. And it was brilliant. I, it, was my favourite part of university by far. It was the bit that I enjoyed the most. And from that, I decided to do a PhD. So I, from that point, did my PhD at Nottingham, got a bit more specialised in what area of medical physics I wanted to do, started working really closely with the kidney group and all that research. 
And then once I finished my PhD, I carried on. So I just stayed in the same department working on developing these new MRI techniques for kidney disease. Um, another thing I was told to talk about was what I do outside of um, being a physicist. Obviously, that's not all I do. Um, so from a young age, I've danced. I was very stuck at high school, actually, whether to do the academic side of things or be a dancer. And I had a deal with my dad that if I got a good grade at GCSE maths, I'd go to college and do maths. And if I didn't get a good grade in GCSE maths, I would go to college and do dance. Um, and probably luckily, I did all right in maths. So I'm now doing this. Um, as well as that, I used to do Jiu Jitsu, which is Hakka Martial Arts. I stopped that when I started university just because I couldn't travel. Um, but I used to really enjoy doing that. Um, and I still do dancing now as well. Um, I guess lots of other hobbies, but you can ask me about those later if you want, if you're interested. I don't think I've got anything else to tell you, so I'll pass you back. That's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, it's amazing the number of people we have come on this who uh, don't uh, particularly want uh, to do physics when they're at school and yet end up there in the end. So I'm sure we'll have a look at more of that. Uh, so we've got the second Sunbury guides in. We've got first East Leak guides in. First Crookham Guides and the fourth Sunbury Guides. Uh, now, I was going to actually ask you all a question before we started. We'll get on to Amy in just a second. But if you think back to right at the start of this, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. So hopefully you've got your mouse ready. Um, I'm interested to know, were any of you planning to take physics A-level? Can you all see that poll? I hope you can. Yep, people are voting, that's fantastic. I'll just give you a second. By the way, some people have sent him some questions already. Uh, one of them is, what is a PhD? Um, I'm gonna ask Charlotte to talk more about that in a moment. That's a good point, sorry. <laughs> do, you, do you wanna just say while people are voting? Yeah, so a PhD is a period of further study. So you do it after you do your degree. Um, so they're normally about three to four years and it is a research project so you take on a project of your own and you spend that number of years doing your research and at the end of it you get your doctorate so you become a doctor of physics or doctor of whatever area you do your PhD in. Um, it's a really good way to see if you like a career in research and even if you don't it gives you some great skills that can be applied to other jobs as well. Um, and Fantastic. Yeah. It's a good, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, and we're just going to share the next one. Do you have any interest in doing physics as a career? So in that first answer, we had 9% said yes, they were going to do physics at A level. 61% uh, maybe and 30% no. It'd be interesting to see if we convince any of the no's in the next hour or so. Okay, I'll give it another 10 seconds on this one. Uh, heard we've also got some people in from Nail Sea Guides as well, so that's brilliant. OK, I'm going to close that one. Right. Uh, now I'm going to ask Amy to uh, come back on the screen if you're there. Fantastic. So uh, would you tell us a bit about yourself, please? Thank you. OK, so um, my name is Amy and I am in my second year of undergraduate study at the University of Nottingham. Um, I'm on a physics master's course um that's going to be four years of study so um i did a year so we've done first year last year i'm part way through second year third year um you get a bit more flexibility with choice in what you want to do with the degree and then the fourth and final year is based on a project in which you um so the your teachers essentially the professors um they will have a um they will have projects which they 
will encourage you to apply for and you can choose which one you want to do for the majority of the fourth and final year of your degree. Um, it's after this that you would do a PhD like Charlotte has done. So um, being in second year, it involves, um, I get a I get a weekly coursework, which is like sort of homework um, on one of the modules, which I do. Um, uh, it's divided into, a, I think it's about five modules which focus on different bits of physics. So um, there's there's wave phenomena, which is about like light and sound and all that. Um, there's thermal and statistical physics, which is about, um, about this is about heat and temperature and how particles move around when you change the temperature, when it goes up, when it goes down, <laughs> all that jazz. Um, there's classical fields, which is about electricity and magnetism and a lot of maths and um, there's optional modules which you can choose um, either within the School of Physics or outside of the School of Physics. So for instance, uh, what our university does is, um, so if you look at the optional modules from the Physics School and you're going, hmm, I'm not quite sure what I want to do out of those, then quite a popular one would be to choose a module from the School of Languages. Um, I know I've got a friend who does some Mandarin Chinese on the side. It it clashes with the quantum physics lectures, but she manages. Um, so um, getting here, I suppose, I was quite good at maths. Um, I was, I'm afraid to say that I was quite good at a lot of things. Um, <laughs> So um, I was encouraged by my maths teacher to do a maths A level um, level at, um, I'm from Belper in Derbyshire, so I went to Belper school and I, I really liked it. <laughs> um, I'll go back before that actually, GCSE, what options did I do? I, mine was the year that had to do computer science and it was compulsory. So that might be an idea because um, I've in a, in the first year of my degree, we did a introductory module, which was like how to code 101 for physical science, which assumed that you came in doing knowing absolutely nothing about coding whatsoever. So um, that was that was helpful. But um, I found it more useful that in my computer science GCSE, um, I had had experience with, it was the same coding software. We used one called Python um, a lot here in Nottingham, although it does vary from across universities. Python's getting a bit more popular. Um, and so I had experience with that beforehand and it, has helped me. Um, our computer science teacher was, it helped a lot that our computer science teacher was brilliant. He, I think he was one of my favourite teachers. He, he like, um, he could speak fluent Spanish and play most stringed instruments and um, he was actually one of the only people because our music, I really enjoy doing music and our music department was a little bit interesting um so he had a sort of organized music group so we met in the computer science classroom and played some played the recorder and some sort of older music anyway um so computer science was one of my gcses my other two were spanish and geography um because i wanted to I don't know if they still do this, the um, English baccalaureate. Um, in theory, if you picked um, like the normal ones, the normal GCSEs and the, something just came up on my computer. Where were we? Um, if you picked the normal GCSEs and you picked um, a language, a humanity and then something else, then you might get some sort of extra credit. 
don't know where that went, but anyway. Um, so I picked Spanish, uh, Spanish geography and computer science. No, Spanish geography and graphic products. It was uh, it was four years ago. It's a lifetime. Um, <laughs> um, and I got really the one thing that I really enjoyed was Spanish. I got really good grades in Spanish consistently. But um, I wanted to go stay at Belper School for sixth form. Uh, and they didn't offer a Spanish A level because there was only two people that actually wanted to do a Spanish A level, and one of them was me, and we couldn't get it appealed. Anyway, I'm not bitter about that. Um, so the yeah, A levels I ended up doing were maths, physics, chemistry, and I did an AS level in drama and the theatre studies. This was because I wanted something to maintain my sanity. Um, the reason why I chose um, the, th the first three A levels, maths, chemistry and physics, was because I wanted to do either chemistry or physics at university. I was, um, I found myself in the first week of year 11 on an open day at Nottingham University with my mum going, why, why are we here? It's too early. It's not too early. Um, because sometimes when, you, when you're choosing your A levels, you sometimes think about like, what? what am i going to do why am i putting myself through this why am i doing these a levels um and what is it going to lead on to for me and i knew for me that was going to be a degree in chemistry or physics which tends to require a maths that's a given um a, another science um this is usually you can go chemistry physics biology um and then something else. Um, I decided to do two sciences and maths because, um, well, I couldn't decide between chemistry and physics and maths. You pretty much need a maths A level if you want to do a degree in a science, except um, if you did pick like different A levels, like not maths, like something else, uh, then then you can do a foundation year before you start the first official year of your degree you can do a foundation year which they will give you a grounding in like everything you need for what you'll need for your degree um so i did those a levels i rather enjoyed them um we had the same physics teacher that i had for gcse um and uh, he had a tendency to go off on tangents quite a lot of the time he was um he was a very good teacher. I quite liked him. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> Am I still going? Yeah, um, no, keep going. Okay. So um, he was a very good teacher. I remember I liked to, I liked doing the practical. So I liked um, watching the other eight boys in my class, me being the only girl. Um, I don't know, set fire to a ruler because, you know, you know when you've got current flowing through a circuit and you've got there will be a sort of resistance to the current and some of the energy gets dissipated as heat and as a consequence if you leave it running too long you will burn a hole in a ruler as we found out anyway back to you how long have i been going oh, that's a, that's about right thank you excellent thank you uh, you've answered so several questions came in earlier on about what gcses do you need to do physics and what a levels do you need to do physics so if you could both come back and join me now uh we're going to spend the rest of our time all together um so yes uh hopefully that's kind of explained that if you're doing gcse if you're doing at least dual award science or maybe triple science then you can come on to do physics um at a level and to get into a physics course at the university you need to do physics and maths <laughs> the great joy, as Amy just said, is that the third, the third A level can be pretty much anything as long as you've got a good physics and maths, then you you are on your way. Um, I've got a quick question from Christine for you, Charlotte. Are you um, a postdoc or on the university staff? I'm a postdoc. So, do you want to say what that means for a second? So, yeah. So, I am university staff. I'm employed by the university. But I'm a postdoc, so what that means is that I, I'm not like permanent staff. I'm not a professor, or I don't have my own office and that kind of thing. Um, and how postdocs work is you work off grants, 
So a grant normally runs for about three years. So you work on a project for three years that depending on how you got the grant and grants come from either like government funding sources or from charities or from the, those kind of bodies that provide the money and um, they either fund a project which is like a, we call it a project grant and you're the researcher employed onto that project which is what I'm doing at the moment or you could also get a fellowship which is a kind of what we all aim for um, and that is a lump sum of money that would be to fund you as a person to do research so depending on how you get into it and what what your research is depends on what kind of side you do um and postdocs tend to do two or three of those before they look to um become more permanent senior staff at the university so hopefully in a few years i'll be doing those <laughs> Right, we talk about physics like it's one subject. It's about 50 different subjects, isn't it? Because uh, um, so Amy is is currently a physics student, but she probably has something she wants to do. Charlotte's an imaging scientist. I'm a forensic physicist. So these are all different kinds of physicists. Um, Amy, it's great. Um, somebody, uh, Rebecca, says that she's used Python several times at school already. So uh, she noted when you were saying about using Python at university that that's still there. So I've got a couple of questions that are the kind of same thing. Uh, to some extent. Um, so Catherine wants to know, did you ever dream of being physicists? Um, Lizzie wants to know, how did you want to be a phys how, um, how did you want to become a physicist? And um, Ada wants to know what you wanted to be when you were children. So if you could say what you wanted to be when you were a kid, how you then changed your mind onto physics, and was it a lifelong dream? Do you want to go first, Amy? Um, yes. So. When I was a bit smaller, I wanted to be either a scientist or a historian. This was in this was when I was about seven. Um, I was I was an OK child. Um, so I got distracted away from the history because um, I was thinking, what kind of job am I going to do with this? Apart from sort of looking at the books and going, oh, it's very interesting. Of course, there are lots of very viable careers um that come with a strong interest in history of course um not denying the legitimacy as a subject but um i wanted to go more into science because it seemed to have so many more avenues for things you could do and um they were right about saying um physics is so many different subjects um i changed my mind into wanting to be a physicist in in the sort of when I was about 16 ish, when we were looking at like, what did I want to do at university? And I wanted to do physics because um, it was just, there's just so much you could do. It's sort of, there's so many branches of physics. Like, I don't know, you've got, can't, sorry, particle physics, you've got quantum physics, you've got, uh, you've got all the astronomy stuff and within each of them there are so there's several several specialisms um so i thought there's going to be something in there for me science related so um i'm going to do physics i think i'd quite like to be a lecturer because um i've been i've been trying to apply for an internship which they encourage you to do um between your second and third year in the summer it's where you um you either volunteer or get paid to do some kind of work for either a company or a research department i believe um and sorry and i was looking at the internships from companies and i was thinking uh some t some of this gives me the fear i want to stay a bit more near academia and thankfully there's avenues for me with that and i also like i like presenting the physics i like talking to people about the physics i like the the bit of me that enjoys acting and likes being in front of an audience and talking to people about physics so um i thought it would be a good idea and i be a better idea to be an lecturer as opposed to like a teacher because um no offense to anybody here but i i'm not brilliant with children <laughs> um i know you're not children but i'm not brilliant with 
younger people. <laughs> but I am here, so that's fine. <laughs> Charlotte, Charlotte, what did little Charlotte want to be? Definitely not a physicist. Um, I'm not sure little Charlotte knew what a physicist was. I'm not sure I was aware that being a scientist was a job. Um, I think I wanted to be a nursery nurse or a teacher. At one point, I definitely wanted to be a hairdresser. Um, mainly, I wanted to be a dancer because that's what I did most when I was younger and have my own dance school and do something like that. I don't think I became aware of being a physicist as a job until I was at college doing my A-levels. And my physics teacher then, because um, he was a physicist, he had a PhD in physics and he was really, really into kind of pushing us all into a physics career. He um, he did like had people come to visit the college to give us talks about doing physics and showed us quite a diff like a variety of different physics careers we could do. Um, so yeah, I I don't think I even knew what being a physicist was until that point. It wouldn't have crossed my mind. Okay, Olivia has asked how many years it takes to complete a PhD. So do you, do you want to take it? So we've got to the end of GCSE. What the, mm -hmm. what are the years from there all the way through to where you are now? Okay, so you do GCSEs and then you do your A-levels, which if you go to a school that has a sixth form attached to it, which I think most of them do now, it's two more years at school. I went to a sixth form college, which is just a different building. It's still really similar to school, but you do your two years there. Then you go to university. Most degrees are three years um, and that gets you your undergrad degree. And then you can do a fourth year, which is your master's. You don't have to have a master's to get onto a PhD course, but that's kind of the traditional way of doing it is you do your master's, which is more research based, and then you do your PhD. So PhDs tend to take between three and four years. Mine took well, three, just under three and a half years, I think. Um, so I guess from being, I obviously finished my GCSEs at 16 and I got my doctorate at 26 so it's 10 years um but lots of different things in that 10 years it's not just 10 full years of phd but 10 years from finishing school jenny wants to know what your favorite experiment is that you've done so far is there anything that you've had a lot of fun doing i'll let whoever can think of one first go for it. i guess in terms I don't think of them as experiments anymore because it's work, so I don't think of it as an experiment. But I did work on a study um, that I thought was really good that had, we were looking at patients that had dialysis. And dialysis is a type of treatment that patients who have kidney disease that gets really bad and their kidneys don't work anymore have to have dialysis. And that's where you're attached to a machine and that machine does your kidneys job for it. For it. So you have a needle in your arm and it takes the blood out of your arm um, and then cleans it in the machine like your kidneys would normally clean your blood um, and there's lots of questions about dialysis and what effects that has on your body so we did the first ever study where we put a patient in, a, in an MRI scanner whilst they were having their dialysis treatment and we looked at what happened to their body during the treatment which normally you couldn't do because you can't take a picture of the inside of the body while someone's having treatment but we did it inside an MRI scanner um, and that was the first time that was done and that was quite cool. It was quite scary because it was the first time ever. But once it worked and had really cool results, that was probably my favourite. Amy. Anything at university, maybe even at school. I had one at school that I loved. So what, what was your, what do you like? Um, I like it when you get to get the radioactive sources out because um, yes. that's always <laughs> fun. Um, we did one at A level where um, it was quite exciting. We had a we had a little um, little wooden box which I think with inside there's a sort of lead tray. Um, it's well, it's not really a tray. It's a block that's the same size as the inside of the box with a little dimple in it. And inside it there is a um, sort of thimble sized cylinder with a the stick coming out of the end and you use the stick to pick it up because it is a radioactive source um, and you point it away from you and you put it on the table and you put the Geiger counter near it. Now the Geiger counter um, clicks whenever it 
well, it clicks near a radiation source. I can't remember off the top of my head exactly how it works. Um, but as you bring it closer, it goes, it goes, <laughs> it goes mad. I really enjoy just like the possibility of danger. Um, we had to blue tack onto the table in the um, undergraduate lab. I was thinking, I wonder if anybody's going to know that their blue tack is radioactive. <laughs> That's great. Um, so Katerine would like to know, this is a delicate question, uh, how much do you get paid as physicists? <laughs> so there's a massive span. So if you get a physics degree, the good thing about a physics degree is that it does equip you for a lot of jobs. There are a lot of jobs that want you to have a degree. They don't want you to be a physicist, but they want you to have the skills that you get from a physics degree. So if you, you could go into like banking, finance jobs, um, like big corporate world jobs, um, they pay big money. They're like, <laughs> I think that's a, if you want to be rich, that's a good way to do it. Um, I, I think that's a, how long is a piece of string? It depends on what area of physics you choose, how much money you get paid. <laughs> um, I'd say the, I'm not going to tell you how much I earn, but as a postdoc, you, it's all right. <laughs> it's um, physicists are the third best paid graduates in the country. Um, really? I've just picked up one. So uh, we've done various things at the IOP, finding out how much people get paid. But this one, let's so let's imagine just for a second, you become a medical physicist. Okay, we've got the numbers in here. You are paid eighteen thousand pounds to train. Your starting salary is between 23 and 36,000 um, pounds. The senior medical physicists get paid 56,000 pounds, and the head of department can be paid anything up to 97,000 pounds. And that's working for the NHS. Okay, so if you're working for in banking, uh, one of the people was earning 100,000 in the first year. Um, if you just go down an academic route or something like that, you, you're starting mid 20,000 and you can go up to 40, 50, 60,000 pounds down the academic route. So it's a chunk of change, isn't it? <laughs> you know? And then if you invent something or create a company or something like that, I think the people who invented Deliveroo was a physicist, is that true? They just sold that for several billion. One of, one of the new internet delivery companies uh, was a physicist as well. Ada liked what you were saying, Amy, about radioactivity. She knows that uh, bananas are radioactive. <laughs> so, don't anybody panic about bananas. Um, right, Lily wants to know, what's the hardest subject that you've had to do in order to become a physicist? Amy, have you found anything hard on the way to becoming well, a physics uh, student? Um. Yes, quite recently. Um, we've got a module called the Quantum World and it's um, in first year you do get some a little bit of in, in sorry in the last year of your A-levels and in the first year you get a little bit of an introduction to some of the concepts um, that are related to quantum physics and it's in second year at least on my course that um, the the real brunt of quantum mechanics hits you in the head. So um, I was doing sort of fairly well in the autumn semester and then this spring term we've recently had a coursework assignment and I got it back and I got one out of 25. Um, that's I think that's by far the worst mark I've got so far. Um, please do not be scared off by this. Um, a lot of people find this module very difficult and because the concepts behind it are very abstract you have to think quite sideways but it is it's a challenge and it's an well, it's an enjoyable challenge in a sort of slightly painful sense um and as i said in the winter semester i was making some headway with it and i do understand a fair chunk and I think I think this last assignment was a bit of an anom anomaly um, with some of the more interesting things we've been introduced to. 
physics is only i'm atrocious at quantum mechanics and i've still managed to have 20 years as a successful physicist how about you charlotte what uh, what do you uh, what do you find tough it's been a while since i was a student um, <laughs> i actually remember but um i agree with amy quantum mechanics was just impossible when you first started it because it it's just something you've never seen before it's so brand new um so yeah definitely quantum i had a similar module but i got a similar mark i think that's part of being an undergrad i think you have to do one that that happens um especially in second year second year is where you feel that leap so i think that's i think we all did that um for me i think probably the hardest was getting into the computing because when i was at school it wasn't compulsory to do any kind of computing i didn't i didn't know about coding until i started university so I'm quite jealous that you all say you're doing Python at school because that wasn't a thing that we did. Um, so probably getting on board with that and learning that stuff that, yeah, writing code is writing, it's like learning a different language. So that's probably the biggest challenge I found. But it's probably the thing that I now use the most day to day and probably what I enjoy the most. But at the time it was quite a challenge. Yeah. I've heard this from lots of people. The hardest things give you the most satisfaction when you actually yeah. succeed. So Katarina has a couple of questions. Uh, is it hard being a physicist and do teachers help you with physics? I guess Katarina's still kind of further down the school. So do the, in your experience, have the teachers really helped you with physics? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. And I think um, you find a, sorry, go on. I think um, physics is definitely um, a team sport. So um, if you're struggling with things, just email, ask the teacher about it when you're a bit higher up you can email the teacher about it um if you've got friends on your physics on your physics in your physics class or on your physics course talk to them about it um that's what i've found helpful just having my well at the moment since we can't meet up we've got our group chat up from my friends who are on my course doing physics with me and talking to them about like when we get to coursework like what's question six all about it's really good to talk to other people and get help from other people your teachers your peers and get help from them with physics it's great what you say about a team sport yeah the idea of a scientist by themselves just isn't true um katherine said in reaction to um she wants to be an astronaut and she needs to do physics or engineering yes that is certainly a big way into being an astronaut uh, olivia interesting really cool. question one i've not seen before um do you get to use things children would play with in your experiments so have you used anything that's like kids would have an access to in a real experiment in the university environment i've completely flummoxed you now haven't oh sorry olivia has completely flummoxed you now because we haven't been able to go into the lab this February, we had a remote lab assignment and mine was, um, I'll get the glass. Um, mine was getting a glass of water, um, filling it up to various, with various volumes of water and going, ting, recording the sound, analysing it. So, um, that's what I've been doing all February. The other thing I can think of is that what we do a lot in MRI before we scan people to check that things work how we want them to do is we scan like a bottle of water. Because we say the human body is made up mainly of water. So if we scan a bottle of water, we'll probably get, obviously it won't look like a kidney, for example, but we can get an idea of what the scan is doing just on that bottle of water. But then also, obviously the human body is water, but it's also fat and blood and tissue so we sometimes have different bottles of water that have different types of water or thickness of water or have like a fatty substance in it to kind of mimic fat that we can scan to look at how that behaves and we tend to do that in ping pong balls so we get ping pong balls that you'd use to play table tennis and we fill them with this substance wherever we want it to be so we'll have one with fat one with water one with something that's a bit like blood um, and then we scan those to look at what the different things do only thing I can think of that's like something you'd play with. Fantastic. Um, so Amber wants to know um, what your favourite highlight of your career so far and why? 
is there any shining moment that uh, that you like i know some people it's the first time they do original research or something like that what what's uh, some big achievement or just a wonderful yes moment <laughs> um probably doing my first talk so a big part of being a researcher not being a physicist you don't have to if you don't want to if you want a different kind of physics career but as being a researcher is presenting your work so what we tend to do is every year we submit what we call an abstract which is one a4 page that describes the research we've been doing and we submit that to conferences and then if you're lucky your abstract gets accepted and then you go to that conference and you present your work to other physicists that might be interested because then they can do similar experiments or they may have already done similar experiments and they can help you with your work so maybe the first time doing that might have been the the biggest like yay moment also we're really lucky in our field that those conferences tend to be all around the world so the first one that i went to where i presented the work i was talking about earlier was in singapore was it yeah singapore um and there were always amazing moments. So you had Singapore, I've been to Hawaii, been to Toronto, all to present the work, which is such an amazing perk of the job. So that might be the best bit. Yeah, international travel is a brilliant bit. I, I can add to that uh, Washington, California, Orlando, Mexico, and Paris. Uh, just again. Yeah, well, we did then... Paris as well. Paris was a good one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Amy, Amy, what's it, any career highlights so far? Getting into a university that rejected me must be a good one. <laughs> Um, well, I think, um, well, it's a thing that's not really unique to me, but it was getting my A-levels and g getting into university, because Nottingham was my first choice university, because you you write down three universities that you want to go to, and you have one that is your top, and Nottingham was my top university, and I would spent sort of two years panicking about these exams that I take in June 2019 are going to decide what I do for the next four years of my life and they came good and I I was fine <laughs> I was I was shaking before I opened the envelope and I got in it was good fantastic um Poppy and Phoebe um have basically both asked uh, what what job would you recommend doing if you want to be a physicist and what jobs can you get as a physicist so uh, anybody know anybody well what it amy you presumably have ideas as to what kind of job you want at the end of it or maybe not <laughs> uh, but what what kind of jobs are there um, there so i could say so my undergrad degree i think there was seven girls doing maths and physics so i can tell you what we're all doing now Give you an idea of what jobs there are so obviously i'm a researcher my friend siobhan is a accountant working in tax my friend megan looks at um she's also a researcher she works in looking at how um changing weather in africa is going to affect i don't really know to be honest something to do with weather in africa um something i don't understand um but that's a really cool job because she spends half a year in africa doing research on that um have someone else who works for ibm in like computing stuff um someone does nuclear physics two more i'm missing um i've got a teacher and i've forgotten the last one <laughs> but it's a massive range of jobs and you don't have to do a job that is like you can do a physics degree and get a job outside of physics or there are jobs that you would never even think of until you start applying um that use so your I... knowledge if I talk about so some of the women I've worked with over the years, um, I've got an Antarctic scientist, uh, so somebody who actually does goes and does physics down in the Antarctic. Um, somebody asked me earlier on what is a forensic physicist. So I work with three women in the forensic physics department, uh, which is um, police bugging devices and weapon systems and fingerprints and things like that. So it's all the stuff to do with physics that you can use in the policing environment. Um, I've got somebody else who's special, uh, a woman called. Her, wonderfully her surname was douse and she worked in water cannons uh, so that was an absolutely brilliant bit uh, of work there i have another um uh woman friend who uh, is in communications and another one called lisa harvey smith 
who is basically Australia's version of Brian Cox. So she's on all the, she's appeared on the Infinite Monkey Cage on the radio. She does a load of TV shows in Australia and things like that. And she lived with me at university and uh, she would look through telescopes. She's an astronomer and she looked through Jodrell Bank and the Parkes Telescope and was part of the Square Kilometre Array, if anybody's heard of that, which is going to be the biggest telescope in the world. So uh, that's the kind of thing she does. Amy, any, any career aspirations, any jobs that you want to get into? Yeah. I think one of them would be um, being a lecturer at a university. Um, I would. I'm also quite interested in because um, I'm hearing what people are saying about like jobs with the weather and seismology, um, which is like how the Earth moves, earthquakes and and stuff, and the atmosphere um, because the it's not just the ground that shakes during an earthquake, the, the whole atmosphere shaking as well. Oh, um, there was a slide um, in the introductory talks when we were being welcomed into the university and it had like a pie chart of where everyone had gone. And one of them was the former head of MI6. So um, that could be an option. <laughs> certainly could I've, I've still got a letter somewhere which is my rejection uh from mi5 so <laughs> i didn't let in or maybe i did who can say uh right brilliant question here from vicky uh how do you feel about the way physicists are portrayed in the media and on tv and film for example the big bang theory, big bang theory. yeah i yeah um i don't mind the big bang theory i I think, yeah, I agree that there is a lot, there are quite some quite offensive um, versions of physicists in the media. Um, I think the Big Bang Theory is quite good at addressing a lot of those things. Um, and I think it's really good that it has women in science in it, because a lot of the time in um, media, if you've got a scientist, it's a man. And that happens in majority of programmes. I really like the Big Bang Theory, although, yeah, the key, key characters are for men in science. You do have, like, Amy and... Bernadette, is it? That are women in science. I, I like that. I like that they have that extra to it. Yeah. Um, some of the representations of science in media, it's sometimes almost offensive because it's like, who is who is this? <laughs> um, as somebody with autism, it was also interesting seeing Sheldon represented on screen because um, although um, it was interesting to see that you know they have these characters like they have women in science they have people who um, people who have a social disability like autism like uh, Sheldon and Amy both appear to have it um, but sometimes you you feel that there definitely is progress that needs to be made with the way that they are represented and uh, the way that they are explored on screen so onwards and upwards also yeah if anybody wants to be a writer and put that yeah. in their thing or their show anybody here wants to go into that then that could be a idea as well talk to us find out what's going on interestingly following along from that Emmeline wants to know when you're demotivated what do you do to raise your self-esteem we all get in the doldrums sometimes what how do how do you get out of them what what gets you going again probably a chat probably someone else in my research team having a, a sit down have a cup of tea um and as normally that normally fixes it when we could when we were allowed to go into the office and meet with people we'd go for a walk around campus maybe if you just needed a bit of a time away from your computer I think a step back always helps. Okay, so one that's slightly related for you, Amy. Uh, how do you normally feel before a big test or moment and how do you cope with it? That's from Olivia. Do you cope okay with tests or? I'm, I think I cope okay with tests. It's sort of got slightly, ever so slightly worse as I've got older. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> um, 
but generally I tend to feel sort of no thought, head empty. Um, how I cope with it is I tend to um, sort of try and sit quietly, try and sit away, try and sit away from it and um, it's it's not helpful when you've got somebody else next to you going ah I don't know what I'm doing um there will be somebody like if there's somebody like that you, know, you um help them reassure them but make sure that you don't let it affect you um that you're sort of breathing nicely <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm rattling through a couple at the moment um, because we're just about out of time. I can't believe it. Um, so Layla, I'll ask this to you, Charlotte. Layla wants to know if you you were ever scared or nervous about becoming a physicist. No, I don't think so. I think because you always make small choices, don't you? So you pick your A levels and then you pick your degree and then you pick what you want to do for your next couple of years. So it was never like a massive decision of oh, I'm going to be a physicist and that's scary. I think if I decided when I was younger, maybe I would have been. But for me, it was always very like small steps of what do I want to do for the next decision? And then it's not as overwhelming, I guess. Right. I want to ask the questions that we um, asked at the start again. So I'm going to put those polls off. But if you're OK, we will keep answering some questions while people are doing it because yeah. I want people to still give the get the yeah, chance to do that. So I'm going to put that poll up again. So if people want to uh, answer that now, that would be absolutely fantastic. But in the meantime, <clears throat> Katerine wants to know, uh, do you get, sorry, uh, Jemima wants to know, are there any jobs with both physics and chemistry in them? I'm sure there are. <laughs> I, I'm inclined to say there are. A lot of science at the moment is at those joint bits between, isn't it? You must have that a lot, Charlotte. Yeah, definitely. So um multidiscipline um <clears throat> subjects are yeah really big at the moment so we do a lot of work where we collaborate with different types of researchers so we'll have um physiologists um like medical doctors we'll have um like computer scientists and they all collaborate together there's definitely versions of that where chemists and physicists for example a um i would imagine nuclear physics would have chemists involved <clears throat> I think there are yeah. probably a lot of jobs like that. Did you have there's something joint, to say on that, Amy? Yeah, there's a joint honours um, at my university, at least, called Chemistry and Molecular Physics. So um, I'm sure that takes more advantage of the overlap. Sue wants to know, does anyone have any tips on choosing which university to go to? I think... Um, Talk to the people, talk to the students you meet and just sort of feel, do you, do you feel comfortable? Um, is the de Does the department look good to you? Do they sound confident? Do they sound like they know what they're doing? The people, the students you meet, the students you talk to, um, like, do you like, that's how I did it at least. Um, Nottingham was the place where I've, I felt the most comfortable. It's it's no use going to a university that's like, oh, we're all that, we're all high grades, top, top, mentioning no names, Oxford and Cambridge. If you don't feel if you don't feel happy there, if you don't feel comfortable with the sort of vibe, if you will. <laughs> yeah, right. I agree. Go and visit them and yeah. Sorry. Um, last two questions. Uh, so sorry to everybody we didn't get to. I've opened the last poll there as well. So sorry to anyone we didn't get to. I'm going to ask two more questions and then we'll have to call it a day, I'm afraid. Uh, so to all of us, who inspired you to become a physicist? For me, it was my A-level physics teacher. <laughs> that was simple enough. <laughs> you too. Do you want to go first, Amy? Yeah. Mine was a bit of the Brian Cox effect, and I kind of wanted to get on the infinite monkey cage. That's still a possibility. <laughs> they haven't called me back. <laughs> Charlotte? I probably agree with you with my level physics teacher. Um, and in particular, he had a day where he brought in this guy called Fred, who was a particle physicist, and he was really cool, and he'd done 
a lot of the research that he'd done had changed how people understand particle physics and he'd say things like and guess where that was created and we'd all have a guess and they'd be like oh it was me and I just thought that was really cool that he had all this very first-hand experience so probably him and my physics teacher together got me really interested. The weird secret I've got is I went to medical school first I was going to be a doctor I only switched to physics after the first year. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> finally Anna would like to know were either of you involved in guides at all? I was a rainbow for a very short amount of time but only I really loved being a rainbow but my big sister got moved up to brownies I think after rainbows and I didn't want to go on my own so I stopped which is probably a mistake so no more than rainbows now sorry yeah uh I've got I wasn't involved in guides at like any stage but I've got friends who have really benefited and made friends from being in guides and rangers my my daughter was a rainbow and a brownie and she's a guide now and she's helping out at a rainbow unit and uh, you can see bits of pictures of her in uh, so on our uh, youtube channel if you look up iop branches uh, you can find videos she's one of the guides in the video showing you how to do things uh, so that's absolutely brilliant we're getting in a load of things saying this has been great thank you everybody for uh, coming along and doing it i would like to echo the thanks of everybody uh, there. Um, if anybody had any burning questions that we didn't quite get to, um, you've already, uh, your leaders will have emails and ways of getting in touch with us. So you can send them in and we're always happy to answer that kind of thing. So in a moment, I'm going to shut things down. Does Charlotte or Amy have anything else to say at this point? Uh, we're getting in thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. This is awesome. <laughs> so everybody seems to have uh, had, uh, had a uh, uh, go with it. By the way, um, the number of people who said uh, yes, maybe to a career has gone up from 13% to 25% during this presentation. So I'm going to close this in a moment and you're going to get the opportunity just to fill in a survey. It's one page long, it's eight questions and it helps us to figure out whether this is having any effect, whether, you know, whether sitting in this room is uh, is a good thing and whether you've enjoyed yourself and stuff like that so if you could just take it will take you one minute to fill it in that would be absolutely fantastic so it's good night good night from me <laughs> good night from God. and good night from me thank you all very much for coming this has been absolutely brilliant bye bye oh yes somebody's just said right at the end uh this is such a lovely way to end international women's day that's absolutely right and another thing you can do is on the 11th of february every year it's international women in stem day and if you look up on twitter hashtag i am a physicist the same thing that's written on your badge okay then you will see pictures of women physicists across the entire world we usually get about fifty thousand women taking part in that and you can look it up now so if you look up on twitter hashtag i am a physicist you'll see all these women from around the world so happy international women's day to everyone and thank you everybody for coming Bye.